Sure, pour me a cup, Gracie. You know, Maxwell House is always good to the last... <laughs> drop. That drop's good, too. Yes, it's Maxwell House Coffee Time, transcribed in Hollywood and starring George Burns and Gracie Allen. With our special guest, Robert Montgomery, yours truly, Toby Reed, Viola Vaughn, Gail Gordon, Harry Lubin and the Maxwell House Orchestra, and Bill Goodwin. For America's Thursday night comedy enjoyment, it's George and Gracie. And for America's everyday coffee drinking enjoyment, it's Maxwell House. Always good to the last drop. Well, as we join the Burnses today, we find Gracie reading from her favorite section of the newspaper, the movie page. George, look at me and kind of tilt your head to one side. That's it. Now grin. What's, um, what's the big idea? Oh, Luella Parsons has a big article here about Robert Montgomery with a, a picture of them together. I was just comparing you two. There's a remarkable resemblance. <laughs> When you grin like that, you look just like Luella Parsons. Hedda Hopper will be jealous. Uh I thought you meant I looked like Robert Montgomery. Oh, you look better than Montgomery. Better? Well, certainly, and more mature. (laughs) Robert, Robert Montgomery is cute in a boyish sort of a way, but you look like you've lived. Okay, okay, hold it. I'm mature. Yeah. Yeah. You know, to a woman, Robert Montgomery looks just like a great big mischievous boy. A mischievous boy. Yes. In fact, the girls in my club voted him the juvenile they'd most like to be with when he's delinquent. Of voting. You know, he, he's got sort of a devilish twinkle in his eye. I, uh, I haven't got that twinkle, huh? Well, yours has settled down to more of a reddish glow. <laughs> well, I'm nice to have around in case you lose something. Uh, what does the article say about Montgomery? Oh, it says he's going to produce, direct, and star in a new picture. And it'll be financed by a Texas oil millionaire. Oh, probably McCarthy, who built that hotel in Houston. They say he's worth two hundred million dollars. McCarthy is worth two hundred million. That's right. And just think, he used to get fifty cents a week from Bergen. Uh, Gracie. Two hundred million dollars. And you try to tell me he was a dummy. Uh, this is a different McCarthy. This is Glenn McCarthy. Oh. Does it say what picture Montgomery is going to make? Oh yes, it's the uh, story of Napoleon and Josephine. I wonder which one he'll play. (laughs) Sam Newman. (laughs) Uh, Probably uh, Josephine. Yeah. Oh, no. It says he's bringing an actress from France to play the part of Josephine. Now, isn't that silly? Why? Well, there are so many fine actresses right here who could do it. Betty Davis, Shane Wyman, Ingrid Bergman, any one of us. (laughs) I mean, any one of you girls. Howdy, little lady. Howdy, little man. Well, look, George, it's Mr. Judson, our dear friend from Texas. Well, we haven't seen you for a long time, Mr. Judson. How's everything down in Texas? Uh, If you don't mind, I'd prefer you to say how's everything up in Texas. (laughs) Uh, why? Heaven is up, ain't it? (laughs) Uh, I made a blunder. (laughs) Well, uh, what brings you down to California? Well, I'm thinking... I'm, uh, I'm thinking of, of putting a million dollars into one of them moving pictures. It's going to be made by a young fella named Robert Montgomery. Oh, so you're the Texan we read about. We thought it was Glenn McCarthy. Who? Glenn McCarthy. Surely you know him. He's got $200 million. 
No, no, I, I don't mingle much with the poor, Texans. <laughs> Murder. <laughs> I, I, I just had a talk with this Robert Montgomery, and I, he seems like a right nice fella for a foreigner. <laughs> Bob's not a foreigner. No? Well, he sure don't talk like a Texas boy. <laughs> Mr. Judson, there are 47 states in this country that aren't a part of Texas. I know. Pitiful, ain't it? <laughs> Mr. Judson, I didn't know you were interested in movies. Oh, well, now, uh, this is my daughter's idea. It's her money. The whole million? Yeah, yeah. The other day, she busted open her piggy bank. <laughs> She's a Texas girl. Yeah. Yes, yeah. From yeah. up in Texas. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> now, now, uh, Mrs. Burns, if you think I should invest this money, I'll do it. I trust your judgment, little lady, you being from the outskirts of Dallas. She's from San Francisco. Yeah, I said the outskirts. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now, I'll tell Mr. Montgomery I'm leaving this check with you. And if you think he'll make a good picture, you give it to him. All right. Well, i got to get back to Texas and help my wife take care of things. She's riding the range. Wouldn't it be cooler riding a horse? <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't it be cooler riding... Yeah. <laughs> oh, I like your sense of humor, man. I'll be seeing you. <laughs> George... This is a great responsibility that Mr. Judson has given me. I wish you were making the picture instead of Robert Montgomery. You're so talented. Well, I'm not making the picture. That would ruin Judson's investment. What's an investment? Well, skip it. Uh, you don't understand business. I do, too. Now, tell me. Well, an investment is something that costs you money, but you don't always get the money back. Now, do you understand, my little businesswoman? Yes, my little investment. <laughs> Drop this whole subject, Grace. Oh, but George, you can act circles around Robert Montgomery. Oh, stop. Remember him in Night Must Fall when he carried that head around in a hat box? He scared the daylights out of people. Well, sure, but George, he had to carry somebody else's head around to do it. <laughs> yes, I'm pretty. Uh, look, Gracie, I'm going to the cigar store. When Bob Montgomery comes for his check, give it to him, understand? Yes, dear. Okay. <laughs> Yes? How do you do? I'm Robert Montgomery. Oh. Come in, Mr. Montgomery. Come in. Yes, thank you. Thank you. I, I was told I'd find a million dollars waiting for me here. That's right. Well, this is rather like the end of the rainbow, isn't it? May I see the pot? He went to the cigar store. <laughs> didn't call my husband back. No, no, I wasn't referring to your husband. I was merely asking for the check that Mr. Judson left with you. Oh, oh, well, there's plenty of time for that. Let's visit a little. Um, how is your wife, Dinah Shaw? Oh, <laughs> uh, no, no, no. No, I'm Robert Montgomery. Dinah Shaw is married to George. No, no, no. I'm married to George. <laughs> Dinah Shaw is married to you. She's Mrs. Montgomery, remember? Yes, yes, but she's a different Mrs. Montgomery. Well, all right, but that's no reason to forget her. <laughs> After people say I'm different, too. Yes, I'll bet they do. <laughs> now, look, I am married, and I have two children, and... Well, how nice. But I have only met Dinah Shaw casually. Oh, come now. <laughs> And innocent as I look. I suspect I'm beginning to look a little older myself. <laughs> now, suppose we start all over again. How is your wife, Dinah Shaw? She's fine, thanks. <laughs> well, that's better. Now, could I please have the check I needed to start production? Start production? I thought you had two children. <laughs> No, no. I mean production on the picture. Oh, 
Oh, well, I've got to be very careful, you know. A million dollars is a lot of money. Yes, Mrs. Burns, that's a nice round figure. Well, thanks, but keep your mind on business. <laughs> now, um, I, uh, I want to know just what the money will be spent for. Well, of the million dollars, approximately a quarter will be spent on salaries a quarter on exploitation, and a half on production costs. That's only a dollar. Now, what about the rest of it? <laughs> Look, Mrs. Burns, Oh, I... come, come, Mr. Montgomery. What do you think this is sitting on my shoulders? A pumpkin? How many guesses do I get? <laughs> Please, Mrs. Burns, may I have the check? Well, there's just one other thing. Oh, no. Now, I'd, uh, I'd like my husband to play the lead in the picture. But I'm playing the lead. It's the part of Napoleon. Well, my husband can play Napoleon. You know, I'll bet he can at that. How long has he been married to you? Fifteen years. I bet he thinks he is Napoleon. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. That's my Uncle Fred. Oh. You can't get him for the picture. He's tied up. I hope he doesn't break loose. And besides, Uncle Fred's kind of dopey looking. Oh. He'd scare people if you put him in a picture. You see... Well, of course uh, he did. Uh... Oh, hello, Mr. Montgomery. Glad to meet you, Uncle Fred. <laughs> George. Is this the man you want to play Napoleon? Yeah, that's right. Just when we're getting along so well with France? <laughs> but, uh, what goes on here? Your wife refuses to give me Mr. Judson's check unless you can play the lead in my picture. Gracie, I told you to forget that nonsense. I'll hand over the check. No, I won't do it. Well, then I'll, I'll uh, have to force your hand open and take it. Oh, now, please, George. George, no violence. It's the only way. Okay, young lady. You asked for it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you try it, Bob. No, no, no. no George, I, I, I could never use force upon a lady so lovely, so young, so beautiful. <gasps> well, I'm Mr. Montgomery. Nah. Now, may I have the check? No, but keep trying. <laughs> I know, I know how to make this delicate hand surrender its treasure. I shall kiss each lovely finger like this. Mm. And this. Oh. And this. Oh. <laughs> By golly, it worked. She's taking the check out of her hand. Oh, don't get excited. I'm just putting it in my mouth. <laughs> There's no use wasting that on my yeah, hand. I give up. <laughs> Sitting on top of the world. And you know, folks, you'll be sitting on top of the world when you taste the joyful, heartwarming goodness of Maxwell House coffee. It's the coffee that's enjoyed by more people than any other brand. And the reason, of course, is flavor. That good-to-the-last drop flavor that adds so much enjoyment to everyday living. To achieve this perfection in flavor, Maxwell House experts skillfully blend many choice varieties of the finest Latin American coffees. First, they select Manizales coffees for mellowness. Next come the Medellins for richness. Then other prime coffees are added for vigor. And finally, Bucaramangas contribute their fine, full body. This superb Maxwell House blend is then radiant roasted to flavor perfection and carefully vacuum-packed in the familiar blue tin. Vacuum-packing is important, ladies. For whether it's ground or in the whole beans, 
Roasted coffee that's packed in ordinary containers is losing flavor because air can easily reach it. But in the vacuum tin, Maxwell House coffee comes to you as fresh and fragrant as the hour it left the roasting oven. And that means you get all the flavor and goodness you pay for. So, friends, start enjoying the best in coffee drinking pleasure. Tomorrow, enjoy Maxwell House. Always good to the last drop. Bob, there's only one way to get that check from Gracie. Let me be in your picture. Oh, but George... Now look, uh, I don't mean as the lead. Just give me a little walk-on part. That'll satisfy Gracie. You know, that's an idea. All right, you can be Pierre, one of Napoleon's soldiers. Swell. What about my lines? Well, don't worry about those, George. We'll hide those with makeup. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, let's go and tell Gracie. We'll hide them with makeup. Well, Mrs. Burns, you win. Your husband will be in the picture. Well, I'll help him rehearse his part, Mr. Montgomery. Now, that won't be necessary. George, can you say, we? We. He's rehearsed. <laughs> this can get me an Oscar. And... <laughs> and now, Mrs. Burns, may I have that check? Well, I'll bring it to the studio tomorrow. <laughs> Well, Robert Montgomery made a big mistake when he left the script of his picture with Gracie, as he discovers the next morning when George and Gracie report to the studio. Well, Mrs. Burns, did you bring the check? Yes, and you can have it as soon as we run through George's big scene. Oh, but George is Pierre. He doesn't have a big scene. Oh, he does now. He has a big love scene with Josephine, and then he marries her. <laughs> no, no, that's Napoleon who does that. You haven't read your history. You haven't read your script. <laughs> you can't change Montgomery's script But George, it gives you a big scene It makes no difference You sing to Josephine It makes no... I, uh... I sing? Yes, yes uh, a, a little French song Yeah Well, this for you and that for me and this for your papa La, 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 la La, 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 la Oh, isn't he oh, wonderful? Isn't he wonderful? <laughs> so far. Well, it's nauseating. <laughs> I knew you'd like it. <laughs> and it's a wonderful scene for you, too. You have some great dramatic lines to speak. I have? Uh-huh. When you come home from battle and find Josephine with Pierre, you fly into a rage and say, Oh, Josephine, you have made me so lame, miserable. <laughs> Josephine, you have made me so les miserable. <laughs> Why, you speak French as well as I do. <laughs> Thank you. And then, then you draw your sword and strike Pierre dead, shouting, Death to the traitor, vive la France. Oh, death to the traitor, vive la France. And then comes your greatest moment of all. You stand over Pierre's body and sing the stirring strains of the Marseillais. Alors, enfants de la patrie. Oh, oh. Say, I like this scene. <laughs> Let's run through the scene once. All right. Here's the script, Mr. Montgomery. <laughs> now, uh, I'll read Josephine's lines, and we'll start where Napoleon Bonaparte knocks on her door. Who is he? It is I, Bonaparte. Oh, Pierre, my lover. It is the Emperor. Mon do. Uh, what will he say? He will say, Oh, Josephine, you have made me so lay miserable. That's what he will say. Mon do. <laughs> Who is it? She's I, Bonaparte. Uh, what will we do? He will draw his sword and strike me dead, shouting death to the traitor. Vive la France! That's what he will do. Yes, but when? <laughs> <laughs> Who is it? 
She's I, Bonaparte. <laughs> My lover, what will he do after he strikes you dead? He will stand over my body and sing the Marseillaise. Alon, Alon's own fool, Alon's own own fool. Alon, this for you, that for me. That's what he will do. She's I, Bone. <laughs> bone? Yeah. I haven't got a part. I don't, uh, I don't think he's happy, Gracie. Well, of course not. You two have all the lines. We also have the check. Oh, yes. <laughs> Uh, I'll tell you what let's do. Let's leave this whole thing up to Mademoiselle Colette. Oh, isn't she the French, the French actress who's going to play Josephine? Yeah, that's right. If she would prefer to do her love scenes with George, he will be the star. If she prefers me, so be it. The better lover will win. Oh, Mr. Montgomery, you fool you. <laughs> George has forgotten more about love than you'll ever know. He has? Yes, and I wish he'd remember some of it. <laughs> I'd never get that in there. They used to call him Volcano Lips Burns. Of course, he's been quiet for a lot of years now. But that's when a volcano is dangerous. He might see Colette and blow his top. Gracie, I don't think Colette will choose me. I'm not as young as Montgomery. Oh, so what? The French like their wine aged and their cheese ripe. <laughs> They feel the same way about men you're in. <laughs> Montgomery hasn't got a chance. Let's go find Colette. Yes, yes. Cherchez la femme. Yeah, see, he's giving up already. <laughs> uh, this is Colette's dressing room. I told her to hide here and not let anyone see her. What for? Well, Gracie, this girl is so beautiful that I, I don't dare let her walk around the lot. Every wolf in Hollywood would be after her. Gee. Thank goodness the wolves haven't discovered her yet. She only arrived from France yesterday. Yes? What is it? <laughs> well, gee, she looks a lot like Bill Goodwin, doesn't she? <laughs> that is Bill Goodwin. Bill, Bill, let us in. Uh, Colette, honey, were you expecting visitors? But no, mon cher. Get lost. Just a minute. Uh, Colette, it's me, the boss. Oh, oh, Monsieur Montgomery, a thousand pardons. Come in, come in. I'd like to have you meet Mr. and Mrs. Burns. How do you do? Banjua. <laughs> <laughs> oh, je suis enchanté. Uh, no. Mandu. <laughs> Yes, Bob. Uh, this girl just arrived from France yesterday. How did you get a date with her so fast? Oh, you know the usual line. <whistles> How about a date, you doll? And that did it? Well, sure, I couldn't refuse her. <laughs> well, she whistled at you. Well, Natch, Natch, I took her out and showed her the town last night. Oh, yes. Hollywood is a strange place. So dark and no buildings. Nothing but trees and benches. <laughs> we, uh... We, uh... We spent some time in Griffith Park. Well, my dear. Oh, I love America. Everything is so different. It is the first time I have ever tasted hot champagne. Hot champagne? <laughs> yes. Bill made it himself. It was the finest vintage, called Maxwell House 28. <laughs> Maxwell House 28? Well, we had 28 cups. Oh. You see, once Colette tasted the rich, mellow flavor of Maxwell House coffee, she just couldn't get enough. She said it was like, um, what was that word she used? Uh, nectar? Well, I kissed her a couple of times. <laughs> 
Oh, the coffee, the coffee. Yes, I, I told her that Maxwell House is America's favorite brand of coffee. Always good to the last drop. But there are three things that Bill just keeps talking about all the time. Oh, I'm so anxious to see them. They must be the three great wonders of America. Well, they're probably the skyscrapers, the automobiles, and the supermarkets. Uh, no, he called them the Medellins, Mandizales, and Bucaramangas. <laughs> Those are choice Latin American coffees, Colette, and when they're expertly blended and radiant roasted to the peak of flavor perfection, you've got the ultimate in coffee drinking pleasure. Maxwell House. Now, Bill, I hate to interrupt your tete-a-tete with Colette, but she has a very important decision to make. Oh, what is that, Monsieur Montgomery? Would you prefer to play your love scenes uh, with Mr. Burns here or with me? Are you kidding? <laughs> no. I no. think somebody is, how you say, pulling my leg. Bill, let go of her leg. <laughs> Tracy, that's just an expression. Well, let go of her leg anyway. <laughs> now, Colette, take a, take a good look at Mr. Burns. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> oh, c'est l'homme le plus drôle que j'ai jamais vu. Monsieur <laughs> <laughs> c'est vous. Oh, Monsieur Burns, il a l'air d'un imbécile. <laughs> Un jerk. <laughs> Now, George, do you understand what they're saying? No, I've, uh, I've never been across the pond. Well, right, right now, I think you're up the creek. I'm not a hit, huh? You know, I, I, I think Mademoiselle Colette is ready to announce her decision. Oh, uh, before you do, Colette, may I uh, see you alone for a moment? Oh, certainly. Step right in the next room. Um, uh, Colette, there are a few things that you should know about Mr. Burns, or as they call him in your country, the liberator of Paris. What? Well, let's sit down and I'll tell you about it. Now, single-handed, he wiped out 30 pans of divisions and turned the tide of the war. Monsieur Montgomery? Oui. Oh, oui. I have decided to play the love scenes with Monsieur Burns. You have? Yes. Madame Burns said he was in the underground for many years. Well, I wonder why she dug him up. <laughs> Underground? Uh, well, you can start the rehearsals, Mr. Montgomery. Yes, yes. Oh, say, Mrs. Burns, why don't you stay and watch your husband do a scene with Colette? The kind of a scene that he'll be doing for the next six weeks. All right. Uh, Colette, take George in your arms. <laughs> Avec passion, baby. Avec adieu. Beaucoup toujours. Oui, oui, oui. Ah, my love air. Oh, you are so strong. So handsome. Ooh, so magnifique. Oh, I want to hug you. Ooh, that's so hard. You're hurting me. <laughs> and now, Sherry, we kiss. Hey, cut, cut, cut. <laughs> this is Burns. Mrs. Burns. <laughs> They'll be doing this night and day. Over my dead body. <laughs> and George is too. He can't stand it. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Help me up, somebody. Check, Mr. Montgomery. You'll just have to struggle through the picture without George. Did you hear that, Colette? Isn't it a shame? Yes. <laughs> Trey Kelly. Good night, everybody. If you like good things the easy way, good things the easy way, instant Maxwell House, that's for you. No time, no trouble, no grounds, no pot, and it's good to the very last, you know what? Yes, instant Maxwell House means great coffee instantly in your cup. Here's real instant coffee, all pure Maxwell House coffee in instant form. Enjoy instant Maxwell House instantly. Good to the very last, you know. 
Robert Montgomery will soon be seen in his new comedy, Come Be My, My Love, with Anne Blythe and Jane Cowell. Until next Thursday, good night and good luck from the makers of Maxwell House, America's favorite brand of coffee. Always good to the last drop. The George Burns and Gracie Allen Show was transcribed in Hollywood and written by Paul Henning and Keith Fowler. <laughs> Stay tuned for that fascinating game with words, the program where you learn while you listen. Noah Webster says, next on NBC.